Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can tell by the title, I am bringing you the makeup tutorial that I did for our engagement photos. Um, I've been getting a ton of requests and asking, you know, what products are best for photography, stay away from things like SPF, stuff like that, anything that's gonna give you flashback. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would film this for you guys. It was super easy, not necessarily the quickest because I did take my time and um, I wanted this to come out really, really nicely. But yeah, just focusing on the skin, a really neutral eye look, a nice nude lip, and some really flirty romantic lashes. Um, for the most part, it was pretty easy and very much achievable with the products you probably have laying around. There's no need to go out and buy a ton of stuff. Um, it's very versatile. You could pair this with a bold lip. You could use this for school pictures. You can use this for engagement photos, whatever you need, headshots for work, anything like that. Um, again, super versatile, super easy, very neutral, um, and I'm really, really happy with how it came out. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing how I got this makeup look, then just keep watching. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get started now that you're nice and close up here. You guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna put this cute little headband in. It says Future Miss, and my sister-in-law actually gave this to me when Nick and I got engaged. So, I thought it was very fitting for the video. It's super cute. So we are actually going to be starting with our eyes first today. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go in and prime my eyelids with the Kat Von D um, color correcting eyeshadow primer. So um, it's really, really important to prime your lids, um, especially if you're gonna be doing something all day long. You don't want that eyeshadow to move around anywhere. You don't want it to crease or anything because obviously in photos, and I'm sure there are gonna be close-up photos during your engagement session or whatnot, um, you're gonna be able to see if shadow bunches. And I'm using this in the shade, I think this is light. Um, I'm using a color correcting one because my eyelids are pretty veiny and red. So I want to really cancel out any discoloration so my shadows lay nice and flat and show up really nice and pigmented. So I'm just gonna take a Real Technique sponge and kind of blend that out. Make sure that it's not chunky anywhere and it's spread evenly all over my lid. This product really sticks when it dries down so I would recommend moving very quickly if you wanna blend this out. So now I'm going to set that eye primer base um, and I'm gonna go into my Smashbox Full Exposure palette. I really do love this palette. I use this on clients all the time. This is my go-to palette to use on clients because it's just such a nice neutral palette. You have your transition, your, your bone setting shade, a black, you have some shimmers and everything in here. So literally this is a perfect palette. If you want like a nice neutral starting palette, I definitely recommend this one. So taking a Morphe M506, I'm going to go into this bone shade right here. This one? Yes. I'm gonna go into this bone shade right here and just set that primer. I'm basically just gonna fluff this all over my eye. Um, just to make sure that our base isn't too sticky because then your shadows will skip. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some scotch tape and this is going to ensure we have a nice um, sharp edge and our eyeshadow is really clean. So what I like to do is I will stick a piece on my hand like so and just get some of the stickiness off because you are putting it on your under eyes and that's a very, very delicate area. So then what I like to do is just go from bottom lash line up to the tail of your eyebrow and just stick that down. You can forgo the tape if you want and just use a makeup wipe to clean up, but I am fresh out. You can also use concealer, um, you can use your foundation, there's a lot of different options. But I'm just gonna use tape since it's sitting right here and it gives me the cleanest line with the least amount of effort. So I'm gonna be working in my Natasha Denona Green Brown palette as well as switching between the Smashbox Full Exposure palette. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is my transition shade and I'm going to take um, number 64V Shell in my Natasha Denona palette. It is this one right here. It's a nice transition shade. Um, super neutral, not too warm, not too cool. I'm just gonna take that on a fluffy blending brush, the Morphe M441 is one of my favorites for doing this. And I'm just gonna start to apply this to my crease and a little bit above.
the shade is about like one darker than my skin tone. Um, so it's a perfect transition shade. And I'm actually gonna bring that pretty high and I'm gonna bring it to the inner corner as well. This is just gonna kinda get us started, lay our base shade down and we will build our shadows from here. We're gonna go for a very like soft eyeshadow look. Um, I don't think we're gonna be doing a wing or any crazy liner. I actually did a uh, darker eye look during our engagement photos and I regret it a little bit. I wish that I didn't um, because it did look kind of dark on camera and our photos had like a darker vibe to them. So it came off a little bit too dark with the editing and stuff. So um, I'm kind of showing you what I wish I would have done a little bit more of. All right, so next I'm gonna go into the crease with this color right here, this brown. It is a little bit warmer. This is shade 90 V Sandstorm, but the darker color we're putting on top of it is a little cool tone, so they'll kind of cancel each other out and still give you that nice natural brown look that we're going for. So I'm gonna take that color on an M433 um, blending brush, and we're just gonna pack this on the crease and in the outer corner of our eye. We don't wanna go in too far. We just wanna darken up the crease a little bit. So we're gonna go one shade darker and then that's actually it. This is a pretty, pretty easy eyeshadow look. So now on top of that, I'm gonna go into my Smashbox Full Exposure and I'm gonna take this dark chocolatey brown right here. And this is gonna be kind of our darker crease shade to really deepen up the V. So now again on that same M441 brush, it's a little dirty, but it's not gonna make too much of a difference. I'm gonna go into this lighter brown shade and we're just gonna use this to kind of blend a little bit above the crease, make sure everything is seamless, no harsh lines. And you continue to add color until you reach the darkness and the depth that you want. And don't be afraid to be messy and bring it all the way out here so that way everything's really blended because we're gonna go over it with foundation. So I'm thinking that I wanna deepen this up even a little bit more. Um, I know I don't wanna go too dark, but I think I might throw a little bit of a black in there. Since we're not using an eyeliner, um, so I'm gonna take this super tiny precise blending brush. This is from Makeup Academy. I think you can get these at CVS. It's really cheap, but I love this precision blending brush so much. So again, I'm just gonna throw that in like the very, very outer corner. Be very careful, don't go overboard. Add a little bit at a time. So now I'm gonna take that brush that I used that dark brown on and without any additional product, I'm just going to blend out the black to make sure we have a really nice seamless fade. I don't wanna add any more color or darkness. So on the lid, I wanna do a little bit of a shimmer. Um, and with these Natasha Denona eyeshadows, I find the shimmers are best if you use Fix Plus. So I'm just taking a flat shader brush and I'm going to spray it a little bit. Um, I don't really wanna use glitter glue. I'm not in the mood to like whip that out and make a huge mess. Um, so we're just gonna use some Fix Plus. And I'm going to go in with the shade 44M Indian Gold. And it's this one right here. And I'm just gonna pack this lightly on the lid. It's a very neutral shell kind of color. Um, it's definitely a very neutral shimmer. Not too gold, not too silver. It's a nice in-between. So as I get towards that black, I'm just like fluffing it gently and kind of melting those two colors together. I like to spray the other side of the brush for the other eye. 
we're gonna go in and do the exact same thing. Now I'm just gonna take that flat shader brush that I used in my crease and I'm gonna just run that over one more time so that way my crease shade and that shimmer are blended really well. There's just a lot of blending to make everything look super seamless. And that is pretty much the eyeshadow look that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this tape off and it will reveal a nice sharp line. So I'm actually gonna use two primers. Um, I'm using the Natasha Denona Magic Prime Anti-Shine Flawless Face Base. I love this one, it's really pore filling. Um, and it keeps me matte for a really long time. So if you're doing photos outdoors or if you have oily skin or your photo shoot's gonna be kind of a long, longer day, um, I really recommend this one. And then I'm also gonna be doing the Dr. Brandt um, Pores No More Luminizer Primer because I wanna look really healthy and glowy during this as well. So I'm just gonna take like half a pump of this and really concentrate this in my T-zone and I'm kind of pushing into the pores because that's what I need most in this area is kind of pore filling and I want to stay pretty matte. Um, I am going to be using a matte foundation so I don't want to use this all over my face because then I'll look a little bit cakey and dry but just in the t-zone is totally fine. Basically you want to choose a primer that suits your skin needs. Now this one I'm going to take on kind of the perimeter of my face and I'm even gonna lay like a little bit of it over the Natasha Denona one, not too much. Um, and this I just like to rub in circular motions and just get a nice glow going. Weird, they both kind of smell like cucumbers. <laughs> now that we're all primed up, I'm gonna go in with foundation. So I'm gonna be using the same foundation in two different shades because I'm like in between a self tan right now. So I'm gonna be using the Huda Beauty Faux Filter High Coverage Cream Foundation. This is what it looks like. This is one of my favorite foundations. It's so full coverage and it lasts such a long time and it gives you a nice like matte but not cakey look to the skin. So um, I have two very different colors here. I have 110N Angel Food and 330N Butter Pecan. So I'm basically gonna make like a little foundation cocktail. Um, I'm gonna take one full pump of the lighter one because I'm pretty light at the moment. And then I'm going to take half a pump of the darker one. Yep, I think that looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to apply this all over my face and I am using a Real Techniques sponge. You can use a beauty blender, you can use whatever you want. I prefer using a sponge because it gives me a more airbrushed finish, which is kind of what I'm going for. For photos, I like to focus mainly on the skin. To me, the skin is the most important thing because that's what you really see. You wanna really just make sure that you take the time to match your foundation, you wanna pick the right one for your skin type and texture, and then you wanna blend it out well. Make sure you get your neck, make sure you get behind your ears, make sure you get on your ears, all the way up to your hairline. If you get a little bit in your hair, it's fine, it comes out. Um, but you just wanna make sure that you're really, really well blended. All right, so we are all nice and blended. We are looking very flat, and I have really dark circles, so I look so goofy right now. So I'm gonna take two concealers. I'm taking my Tarte Shape Tape and I'm going to take the KKW Concealer. Um, this is in the shade two and this is in the shade fair because I am a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna take the Tarte Shape Tape mostly on my inner corner and focus it there. And then I'm gonna take KKW and we're gonna put this all the way over. And we're gonna highlight with this one as well. So this is a little bit less coverage than the Tarte Shape Tape, and I find lately the Tarte Shape Tape gets a little bit too cakey for me because it is so matte. Um, so I'm just gonna use this on the high points of my face. And I'm using the foundation side of my sponge because to blend out the highlight, it like dulls it down a little bit. Um, and it kind of melts it in with your foundation a little bit better. 
but for my under eye concealer, I will go in with a fresh side. And I didn't pick a shade that was like 18 times lighter than my skin. You wanna pick a shade that gives you that highlighted effect, but you still look very natural. So just make sure that you're careful around the eye area when blending out. You can even use, I have these little tiny Real Technique sponges that are really good for kind of getting in that corner. And I like them for the inner corner as well. It does take a lot longer to obviously blend out your concealer, but you can get really precise. So now we're gonna go in and set the face. I'm going to be using my tried and true trusty Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I know this stuff works. I know it leaves me flawless. I love it, it's so good. I use it all the time. It makes you look so airbrushed, you have no pores. So I'm going with what I know. Um, I know I use this all the time. People are like, use something else. And I'm actually taking it on the damp sponge and I'm gonna set my under eyes with it and I'm just gonna look up so you don't crease. And I'm not gonna bake, I'm not gonna leave it on there at all um, because I don't wanna look too cakey. I'm just going to pat it in with my sponge. So use a little bit at a time. You don't want to use too much where it's like falling onto your shirt and stuff. That's how much I use normally when I bake. And I'm gonna set my cheeks a little bit further down because I sometimes get oily here around my nose. I'm going to set my nose and then I'm gonna set a little bit of my forehead, my chin, and the top of my lip. And that is pretty much it for right now. We'll go back in and finish setting after we're done with all of our cream products. You just don't want that concealer to crease. So you definitely wanna go in and set that right away. So I'm gonna be cream bronzing just because I think that it gives kind of a softer, more airbrush natural looking tan than if you go in straight with a powder. So I'm gonna be using my Chanel Soleil de Tan, Soleil de Chanel, whatever. This is the best cream bronzer I've used in my entire life. I love it so much, it's worth every penny. Um, I've used it so much and it doesn't even look like I've made a dent in it. So I'm taking this on a crown brush and I'm just gonna swirl into here a little bit and I'm just going to go ahead and bronze lightly. And I like to push into the skin first and then kind of blend it out. Just gives your skin such a beautiful looking like tan flush without looking crazy. And I'm gonna take it a little bit up the temples just to blend it up. And then I'm gonna take it on the forehead in my hairline. When I say in, I mean like actually in my hairline. <laughs> so to set that cream bronzer, we're gonna go in with our Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I like this because it has a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not glittery, but it's not totally like a flat matte. And it gives just like a little bit of like healthy life into the skin. So I'm just gonna place that over the Chanel bronzer we used. I'm gonna take a little bit down my neck, underneath my chin to kind of carve that out a little bit. And I'm actually going to take a blending brush and I'm gonna contour my nose a little bit. I like to contour with bronzer because it's not as harsh as if you do it with like an actual contour powder. And I'm gonna throw a little bit under my lower lip to make it look a little bit fuller. So I actually wanna brighten up my under eyes just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in with the KKW Beauty. Um, this is their brightening powder, and this is in the shade one, Brighten, which is like her banana shade. And I'm just gonna pop that right here. I don't wanna lose any of that brightness when we were bronzing. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit of that on my forehead. And again, just in my T-zone, so we look nice and bright. Now for contour, I'm gonna go into my Kat Von D Shade and Light palette, and I'm going to take this lightest shade here, I think. And I'm just taking that on a Morphe M510. I don't think this brush is meant for contouring, but I like it because it's really fluffy and not too dense at all, because I don't want like a dense 
thick contour. I just want a little bit more definition under my cheekbones. And this Kat Von D Shade and Light palette is one of my favorite contour palettes because the powders are so smooth and the colors are just perfect. For blush, I'm gonna go in with NARS Orgasm. This is like a cult classic favorite. It's just such a beautiful um, pinky blush with some gold shimmer in it. It, again, just makes you look very healthy and it gives you that like pretty flush. Um, so I'm just gonna take that on a fluffy blush brush and apply that to the apples of my cheeks, pulling back to give us that like lifted effect. So now that we have our face products pretty much all on, I'm gonna go in with some MAC Fix Plus and just spritz my face so everything kind of melts together and all the makeup and products fuse together, creating like a nice seamless airbrushed finish. So for brows, I did those off camera because if I didn't, we would literally be here for like 18 hours and I don't know, I think brows are the most boring thing to watch people do. So I just went ahead and did them off camera. I did use my Anastasia Dip Brow in the shade Ash Brown. Typically I'll use a taupe shade, but because you do get a little washed out and colors do get a little bit dull in some photos, um, I decided to use a pomade because it's really nice and bold and they're really defined because eyebrows do frame your face. So I definitely recommend filling in your brows if you're getting photos taken. So now I wanna go ahead and finish off this eye look. So now I wanna go ahead and finish off this eye look. I'm gonna take a Morphe M432. It's just kind of a flat um, eyeliner brush. And I'm gonna go into that chocolate shade that we used in our crease. And I'm just gonna put this very closely to the bottom lash line. And I'm gonna keep this on like the outer third. And I'm gonna connect that line to our top lash line. So everything lines up perfectly. Now I'm going to take a fluffy blending brush and go into this lighter brown shade here and blend that out. For an inner corner highlight and brown bone highlight, I'm going to go into this pearly shade here. It is a little bit shimmery, um, but nothing too crazy. And I'm just going to put this underneath my brow bone to highlight. If you like a more intense, again, feel free to pick up some Fix Plus, dampen your brush and everything will show up a lot more metallic. But again, I wanna kinda of stick on the natural side. Now for mascara, I'm gonna go in with my usual two combo, the Better Than Sex mascara, and then my Bad Gal Bang for the lower lash line. Now you can leave it with just mascara, but I have very, very short stubby eyelashes, even if I curl them with an eyelash curler. So I'm gonna go in with Lily Lashes and in the shade Rome. So these are kind of wispy. Um, the band is pretty thin, so I don't know if I'm gonna need eyeliner. I don't think so. I think I can manage without. Um, but yeah, they're really wispy, fluffy, and they're really, not natural looking, but they're very romantic looking. So I'm gonna pop these on and I'll be right back. All right, lashes are on. If you see a little bit of white when I look down, that's my lash glue still drying, sorry about that. If you do plan on wearing false lashes, I would really, really recommend practicing before because lashes can be super, super tricky and you don't want them like sliding off or like misplaced or anything like that. Um, these actually were really easy to apply. That's why they're my favorite. Um, they're super easy and I didn't need any eyeliner or anything. So that's just my recommendation. If you are doing lashes, make sure that you practice a little bit and are comfortable wearing them for a long period of time as well. So now I'm gonna go in and do some highlight. We are almost done. This makeup look is really coming together and I'm really loving the way it looks. I actually like this better than what I, like mine came out looking like on the day of like, I think this looks so much better. Um, so I'm actually gonna take a liquid highlight to start with, um, Marc Jacobs, the Dew Drops in the shade Do You. And I know this is a big no-no because we already set our face and stuff like that, but 
with this product I'm just squeezing out a tiny tiny mitt like so with this product I actually don't mind it because it is such a pretty highlight and it melts into the skin so well it lays on top of powders really nicely so normally I would never ever ever do this and it does really blend nicely with the powder you can actually build and I'm going to layer a powder highlight on top I'm just gonna hit my cupid's bow with this I'm gonna hit the tip of my nose and then the bridge of my nose a little bit nothing too crazy I don't want to emphasize my nose and then I'm gonna hit my chin a little bit just for some added oomph to our look and I'm gonna hit the forehead a little bit you can even hit like the arch of your brow a little bit above I'm gonna go in with a powder highlight and I'm gonna actually use my Smashbox Spotlight Palette in the shade Pearl. This is the Casey Holmes collab version, but they do just still sell the regular Spotlight Palette. So this is the limited edition, just this packaging, um, but you should still be able to get this palette. And I'm taking that on my Anastasia A23 highlighting brush. This is my favorite brush for highlighting. So I'm going to take this in I think this is Blow a Fuse, this champagne -y color here. And I'm just going to go over that Marc Jacobs highlight that we use. And I love this because it doesn't emphasize any texture. So if you're looking for a really pretty highlight that gives you such a nice glow but doesn't do anything crazy to your skin, I highly, highly recommend this one. And I'm pretty much just highlighting everywhere that I put the Marc Jacobs highlight except for my forehead and my chin. Alright, so the only thing we are missing to finish off this look is our lip color. So I'm going to go in with the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil and this is in the shade Stark Naked. Just a really, really pretty nude. And I'm going to line my lips and I am going to overline them a little bit just because I have really small lips and I like to make them look a little bit plumper. Our lips are lined and filled in. Um, this is kind of just like a your lips but better color. For lipstick, I'm gonna use a MAC Bullet lipstick and this is actually, is this a, this is an amplified one and this has been the shade half and half. This is one of my favorite nudes. It's just so, so pretty. And it has a really, really nice texture to it. So it is kind of matte but not like suck the life out of your lips matte. Um, I actually use a liquid lip for our photos and I kind of regret doing so. I mean it was nice because like you're kissing, it's windy, you don't want to wear lip gloss because stuff really gets stuck in there like your hair and all that stuff. Um, but I regret wearing a liquid lip because it was a little bit too harsh and the lines were like very stark and you know I just feel like a bullet lipstick is a little bit more natural looking and I mean if you are taking breaks you can reapply throughout. Alright guys this is going to conclude this makeup tutorial. I hope you learned something and it was helpful for maybe some special photos or a special event you have coming up. Like I said this makeup look is super natural and super easy so it can really be applied to anything, any event, doesn't just have to be engagement photos but um, this is what I wore and it came out really nicely in pictures I'm really happy with it I think this actually came out better than when I did my photos so I know some of the products I used today were a little bit more high-end kind of more on the expensive side so if you are interested in seeing a drugstore version of this let me know in the comments down below and I would be more than happy to do that if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe before you go and don't forget to hit that little bell below so you get notified every time I upload which is typically every Monday and Thursday I try and get two videos up a week for you guys um, and if you have any other special requests or videos you want to see let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to film them so yeah thank you again so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and until next time